We are live. So we are. Uh, it appears that way. Ooh. All right. We are live. You ready? We're live. You silent? I'm looking. What do you look for? Make sure I got my act together. Oh, okay. Thought your act was always together. Most of the time it is. Yeah. All right. Well, sometimes it's not, though. Oh, kind of like right now. Well. Hello, Mom. Always the first one on. It's still good. Uh. All right, we'll take it away. I'm going to silence my phone because I did not do that. I didn't do mine either. Just need to turn that down, huh? That's correct. So they're talking to you. They don't want to talk to me, so you have to talk. Oh, come <laughs> on, man. What's up, JW? Michael Brendel. I see you had an anniversary. Happy anniversary. Oh, no. I have one coming up myself. Do November the 4th. Oh, wow. 21 years. Don't seem possible. Uh, I didn't think 10 was, and then I passed that this year, so. Mm. Well, it'll be 21 before you realize it. Um, yes, Mom, I'm beat. I'm tired today. Cannot get motivated. <laughs> Dude. I mean, I'm telling you, I woke up tired. It's never a good day when you do that. No, it's not, but it'll be all right. It's all that fishing we did this weekend. I only fished two days. No. Yeah. Well, you might have fished. I boat rode for two days. Well, that's pretty much what, what I did yesterday was boat ride. Mm. All right. Well, you got to get a little bit more excited about this. Woohoo! <laughs> um, Joel, Chris Dover might be able to weld that. He probably could. But the big question is can you get to him? That's, uh, that's a, I don't know where he's from. Joel lives in Wilkesboro. That'd be a drive. That would be a huge drive to Blacksburg. Yeah. That didn't sound good, did it? No, it didn't. All right, anyway. So, uh, I guess we're going to talk about everything that happened over the weekend. Going to do some uh, ball fishing tactics. Well... We're going to attempt to, seeing as how neither of them, none of them work for I'm going to say, we good. could tell them a whole lot of what not to do. Yeah, we could. I mean. We could. At least my breath's not going to stink. Well, that's. While I'm doing it. Dude, you just woofed down half a can of Tic Tacs. I mean, come on. I mean, hey. And you got to talk and you're woofing down orange Tic Tacs. No, tics. you're talking right now. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm sorry. This is going to be a bad one. I can feel it coming. No, it's gonna be a good one. Now, we just gotta get some interaction from. We are. Stephen Michael Stone wants to know how to catch fish on Norman. So do I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you, don't go down the lake. <laughs> mm. Well, you we'll start with that, or we're gonna review all the tournaments. Let's review all the tournaments since there's oh so many of them happening right now. Well, you can take Wiley, and we'll go from there. Wiley is the same old trash hole it was <laughs> all year long. No. Um, Nobody wants to hear that. Ten pounds, I think, won Mike Saturday. St Mike Stevens? He won. No, he got beat in the cat. He won the uh, XL because they, they ran side by side. Okay. Um, the problem is, is I was fuming a little bit and didn't stick around to really see who won the cat. Um, well, so you should have told me I could look that up. Well, I know. I'm sorry. Shane's covering up those hamburgers. Nope. No hamburgers. No. Nope. He, he ate a salad today and a wrap for dinner. Because we get to share two meals together on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps us busy. Uh, between that and loading the store with all the new stuff that keeps trickling in. Yeah, you guys need to come by and check out all the new stuff. We've got everything from 
new treble hooks to a whole wall of Yamamoto, Zacco, Zaco, however you'd like to say it. Bunch of them, bunch of new Cinco's. All kinds of stuff come in, in the last couple of days. We got a new load of Ricos coming very yep. soon. If it ever gets here. I, I don't know. I don't know. Tomorrow we'll check in on that. But anyway, anyway, no, Wiley was Wiley was uh very interesting. Um, it's just it's fishing really tough because the water's still up and down. There's no, I mean we got rain what Thursday, rain yep. pretty good into Friday and they sucked it all right back out. No, it yeah, it's just I I don't know. It was it was still coming in. You know, it's just not stable. Well, I mean, that's kind of to be expected, you know. This time of year, they don't want to let – they don't want to not have enough water in the lake, but on the flip side of that, they don't want too much either. I kind of wish we could go to um, Tennessee where we have a scheduled – Flow draw, release. Yeah, yeah, draw down, flow release. Not the, oh, I think I need a bonus today. Let me run the dam a little bit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Surely they don't do that. No, not at all. Mm. Well, tell us what kind of patterns and stuff, baits. Give us some clues. I, I mean, I, I will. I, you got, I don't. I, 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 I. There, there's no rhyme or reason to it. The topwater bite stinks. It stinks at Norman. It stinks at Wiley. That's crazy too. Usually by I now mean, it's on fire. Be beyond. I mean, it, it should have been on fire a month ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon's not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> but I get it. Heard the mail was shutting down Monday. The mail? Don't say that. That You know what? That would be par for the course. We'll be, back, be. To, we'll be back to the Pony Express days. Well, I did have a fraudulent charge on my debit card today from the Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who out there has had to deal with debit card fraud i have i, I think everybody i has. dealt with that crap today somebody somebody charged 492 dollars on my debit card at the um the pilot in prosperity south carolina i didn't even know the prosperity hang had, on, a, had a, a pilot hang on a second you don't think sabaga we hadn't seen him in a while you don't think he maybe he took my money and went in he, my he, he took your money and went in my <laughs> I don't know if I was gonna take somebody's money. I'd take more than five hundred bucks. I mean, I'd make it at least hurt a little bit. I mean, it does. Yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about like I'm gonna make it to where I can get to an island somewhere and not have to worry about it. <laughs> Look at that, Mark Silverthorn. Me, I just got my four grand back today. Well, good. I'm glad you got yours back. It gives me hope. <laughs> mm. That's bad. Yep. Well, anyway. Uh, since David don't really want to talk about Wiley, why? I mean, there's, I don't know what to say. I mean, one week. Tell us like, how you caught your fish. I what you call them? What I had? Spit. I had a whopping five fish for seven sixteen. You had a limit on Wiley. That's saying something in itself. I mean, honestly, I threw the same shaky head I won the Federation with two weeks ago, and it did not pan out. I cannot buy a jig bite. I cannot buy a topwater bite. Um, there's fish. There's fish still in 20 foot of water on Wiley. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I think it is everywhere. I just think that right now we're we're used to having warm winters. You know, we're actually cooling down this year, and I think the fish are st just slow to change with it. Um, but no, I can't. I have nothing to say about Wiley other than I suck. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you want me to say? I well, I went to High Rock Saturday and uh, got to got to fish with Jerry Davis over there. We fished the Rock Outdoors tournament. It was um, it was interesting to say the least. Um, we did the wrong thing. We tried to fish docks all day, and that's not smart. And that's on me because I love the docks. But um, the the weather was cloudy and overcast, and the wind blew a lot. And we tried that a little bit later in the day, but I really think that... Uh, that, cream, that screams crankbait, spinnerbait, chatterbait. To yeah, me. it does, but I think that we should have did it first thing, and we didn't. 
and I think the bite kind of died. Nah. From from what I've seen the last couple of tournaments I fished, the bite gets really really tough after about eleven o'clock. I don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with the moon or something. I really really don't know. But um, I apologize. I don't know the guys' names that won. But they had almost twenty one pounds. They had a seven pounder. And the guys that finished second had nineteen with an eight pounder. We had four fish for about. 10 or 11 pounds. We didn't, needless to say, we didn't even weigh them. Yep. Chuck them back in. Yeah, throw them back at the high, at, down there at the rock because that place has got, um, that place has got big ones. For those of you that, that fish high rock a lot, know what it's all about. And some of us uh, go occasionally, but it's, uh, it's a great place to fish. Danny Gibson <clears throat> wants to know, have we been catching any on a jerk bait? Well, maybe. I mean... <laughs> I guess if you consider 13-inch fish catching them, yeah, they're biting a jerkbait. Well, I can tell you this, Danny. They are definitely biting a jerkbait some at Norman. Um, you know, it's obviously not prime time for it yet, but they are biting it some. Haven't really caught any big fish on it, but, um, you know, it's been good to get a limit filler. Um, for me, Norman's just been, man, it's just been junk fishing. I mean, you go out there one day and you catch them, you know, you catch them cranking, and the next day you go, you catch them on a jig. And just, you just got to play the day, I guess you'd say. Head on a swivel. Yep. No, Wiley, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't thrown a jerk bait at Wiley. I've heard a couple of kayak guys have been catching a few on it, but I can't bring myself to throw it with 71 degree water temperature it's very hard mentally to do that well, i'm just gonna tell you when your lake has spotted bass in it you'll learn to you'll learn to throw it because they that. bite it all the time you just and you know wiley's those got, same, got a lot of spotted bass in it now. those same spotted bass used to come up and eat a vixen too well <laughs> they just they, i don't know what to tell you about that hmm watery and jerk bait have never been two things that come to my mind together. No, me either. I mean, maybe in February, maybe there are there. I will say there's some stuff at Watery that would be fun to throw a jerk bait on. I've only been to Watery maybe two times in the fall. It's tough. Watery in the fall is tough yeah, as nails. Rough. I mean, we all complain up here, and those guys are, you know, you've got a couple have figured out how to catch them, but it's not easy, easy. <laughs> Anthony, if I had if I'm I had something, to talk him out of goods, but he don't. He ain't. He's not wanting to cooperate. I've got nothing. I mean, I've got no good. It's here's how it is. The man who makes the most cast wins. Some days I'm that guy. Most days I'm not. I'm fat. I'm out of shape, and I'm slow. What can I say? <laughs> well, I mean, hey, let's just keep it real. I, evidently, our viewers seem to like fat guys that take their shirts off, though. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't happened. know where that came from, but I wish that would happen all the time. I mean, you guys, somebody amped up a video of Johnson taking his shirt off to like 300,000 views. It was ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. I'm not sure what happened there. So, If, if that's the case, we, we'll get him to come in here and get him up on the table and take his shirt off if, I mean, I, if that's all it takes. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, I fall fishing is... Feast or famine. I, I feel like if we all run around and most everybody's got a home lake and we all fish and we all know to go here and go there and catch a fish, but I'm starting to wonder if you don't just pick an area of the lake and fish. And you Sit know, down and just fish. I think a lot of times in the fall that that's what happens. It's more of an area thing than it is a pattern thing. And Lake Norman is a prime example of that right now. There's there's a couple sections of the lake that are uh, dead. That are dead, <laughs> and there's maybe a half a section of the lake that they're biting a little bit, but uh, nothing really seems to be on fire right now. I think um, the lower end of the lake down there, from like Davidson down to Ramsey, is dead. From what I can tell, is turning over because the water looks really nasty, and I've never really seen that down there before. But see, you said Davidson to Ramsey. Mm-hmm. So, when we left Davidson at 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. which may have been a mistake, may not have been. No, it wasn't. 
but <laughs> we started fishing our way back up and all the way back up to queen's landing it was brown on the main lake if you got off the main lake into a creek or a deeper pocket you could get away from the nasty water i got you i don't know if it's i mean i don't know jonathan foster fall, fall fish. fishing sucks Man. now jonathan uh, come on now I used to I used to really enjoy the fall and this year's been just a struggle. This whole, this it's been off. It really has. You know, where I think a lot of fish this year at Norman have been caught offshore, which is not traditionally the case. You know, that kinda got showcased during the Bass Open where I wanna say eight of the ten guys were that were that made the top ten were fishing off the bank. So but my question and this is just my thinking you either have to fish for 10 pounds 10 11 pounds or you got to fish to win Mm -hmm. and unfortunately you show up at norman on any given sunday and it may take 11 pounds as we saw this weekend or it may take 17 pounds well derek derek and uh derek comes and josh won the cat on saturday with almost 15 and then the very next day it takes almost 12 you know and they only had like 20 boats in the cat, and we had almost 60. So, I mean, it goes to show it's, it, that place is so day-to-day that... Um, uh, fall did just get here, Danny, but I, these fish have been setting up like they are right now for a month. They, they're they locked in a bait hard, hard and heavy. And the problem is the bait's all about that big. Yep. And it's not, I mean... It's not easy. It's just not easy to trick those fish. Chris, you can't sign up for the Special Olympics. They have a special clause this year. Nobody from Blacksburg can fish. You are out. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. No, Chris. I think if you go to Foothills website, you can go to uh, uh, socc dot com. I think it is. My dad signed us up last night. Okay. Um. I want to say that's what it is, Chris. Socc.com, and um, just fill out the uh, the entry form, and you should be good. Um, <clears throat> Jonathan Foster, I used to be well. I still am. I like to fish out, and let's just put it this way: fishing, at least at Wiley, is evolving. Well, here's the thing about Lake Norman, and I've said this before. If you're fishing a multiple day tournament, go out there and get off the bank. Because you can win a multiple day tournament off the bank. But I, to, but I still think you have to have something but, on the bank. A but the, the, chances, the chances of you winning a one day tournament off the bank at Lake Norman are not very good. And don't get me wrong, don't nobody blow me up saying that it can, it can be done. Yes, it can be done. Absolutely it can. But I'm just telling you that, in my opinion, I think the biggest fish live on the bank and that being said do you want to go out and try to grind you five to seven bites or do you want to go out and catch 20 and hope you catch a couple good ones it all depends on you know what people want to do i don't think the mindset is wrong i just still think that no matter it be a one-day tournament or a multi-day event you still need something (coughs) from the bank the amount of five pounders that are living 40 foot deep compared to four inches deep your odds are better four inches deep than 40 foot. I agree with that. But I mean, there again, it all depends on what the person wants to do. That's uh, that's the good thing about Norman is you're not really locked into one thing. It all depends on do I want to fish for a check or do I want to fish to win? Well, and unfortunately this past weekend, had we fished for a check, you might have won. <laughs> we could have had a shot at winning. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just like at Wiley. I mean, we... If you go offshore right now at Wiley, you, at 10 pounds... You might have a shot at winning. Yep. But if the bank bite happens to be on that day, you will be so far down the list, you won't even be able to see the top. That's a fact. I mean, especially when you show up at Norman and you got you and Hamrick and Hoover and Jason Wilson. and I mean, it's not like you're fishing against slouches. No, no. What is that? Bait Bait consistently changing throughout the last five years and Jonathan I just want to know your opinion why do you think that is 
Well, but I have my own opinion. But when he says bait changing, no, uh, I know exactly what he's talking about. No, I wouldn't say it's becoming a herring lake because L lives act totally. Yes, suspended offshore. That is a factual statement, but you can't fish them the same as a herring. Like they just don't act the same. Learn how to fish real deep. Is all I can say. But the do, we brand- wanna, do we want to go down this road? What do you mean? Because <laughs> this all goes back to them stupid hybrids that are in Lake Norman. But that that does. I agree for Norman, but for Wiley, we can attack it from Wiley's stance. But no, not really. You can't because there's no hybrids in Wiley. That's exactly right. The bait, the bait's the same though. Not necessarily. And the reason I say that is there's still plenty of thread fin in Lake Wiley. The thread fin population at Norman is really is probably as small now as it's ever been. And it's because of the hybrids. The good thing is the hybrids have now really kind of turned off the thread fin and have went to the outwives because now you see and and I seen this Sunday, seen four or five guys, everybody knows where they get right out there, um, in that little bay right below Molly's backbone, headed up the river. There are four or five guys out there hybrid fishing. And they're doing it 40, 50 foot deep because now the hybrids have moved out to 40 and 50 foot deep with the outwise. Is that what them boats were just above Hager's going up the lake? Yep. Okay. See, I don't even. They're out there hybrid fishing. I hope and pray that a big man above will catch everyone in the lake. (laughs) I don't know. But, but anyway, our tournament on Sunday down there was won by the legend itself, Guy Aker and Gene Webster. They uh, had a whopping 1170-something. I don't remember what it was exactly. And it took uh, just a uh, just a little bit over 10 pounds, I think, to get paid. It's probably the toughest day I've had out there in a really long time. But I'll tell you guys something that uh, something that I've been catching a lot of fish on out there is uh, it's a little bitty jig. A eleven seventy four is what they. Huh? Gene's on here. He said eleven seventy four. Uh, okay. But um, and I don't know how Guy and Gene caught their fish. I mean, you know, everybody guys known for fishing shallow and jeans known for fishing deep so i mean you know it could have been anywhere in between i didn't really ask them about it but anyway congratulations guys and um um i didn't have hardly anything like i said it was like we had like eight pounds i don't know it's probably the worst day i've had out there in a long time but um i've been catching a lot of my fish out there on a uh, on a queen tackle peanut jig gene Gene, now come on. We know they come in the mouth. It's oh. not bed fishing season. There's no question about that. <laughs> I don't know. He might have snagged them on the A rig. I mean that I, the live scope. I mean you can see them. Oh yeah. The old pause and drop. We get them every time. That's won't right. It? That's right. <laughs> Jason Land. Hey, what's up, Tiger King? I'm glad to see you jumped on here tonight. <laughs> Tiger King. That's just wrong. Hey. He, you know, the Teletubby. I'm still sore about the Teletubby thing. So what? Yeah, you didn't don't remember the whole Teletubby. Well, I don't pay that crap no attention. Oh, well. <laughs> Jason Land, we uh we threw our three fish back and um I, I'm I made like a banana and split back to Rock Hill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Gator, I seen Todd Hammond ask a while ago where Gator was at. I tried to call Gator yesterday evening a little bit later. Is he one of them early to bed types? It depends. Oh. <laughs> if he does good in the fishing tournament, no. If he sucks in the fishing tournament, yeah, he's in the bed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well. Speaking of Todd Hammond, Hayden. Ah, uh, yeah. Hayden, who uh, who l- lost the boat wash at High Rock, now has lost a truck wash. As a- any good bookie does, they give him a chance to. Uh, yeah, I gave him a chance to. Get, to, get, to to get square redeem himself, <laughs> I guess you would say. Mm. But uh, 
So now we are going to have a truck and a boat wash. I don't know what we're going to do this week. I mean, I'm out of things to wash. It's time he pays the piper. I'm out of things to wash. Underwear. Nah, I wouldn't do that to anybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm running out of things to wash. I don't know. Hmm. He lost again. I, he lost again. I see it. But hey, you gotta give him, gotta give him a for effort. He don't give up. No, he's he's definitely got the moxie. Anyway. Yep. No, we we sucked it up. I actually. We had opportunities, but when they're not biting top water good, those opportunities just don't count. Yep. <laughs> what? That text I just got from Matt. No. Hey, what did it say? Enjoy everybody fishes and appreciate all the fishermen. They're all pros in my book. <laughs> mm. All right. Ted Yen wants to know what all trails right. are fishing wildly. Ted, there's a cat trail that runs through December. I think it's uh, every other week, November. There's two two in November and two in December. And then um, XL Extreme Lakes Challenge. Lee Lucas has put together a winter trail that runs side by side with the cat trail through December and then it continues into uh, I want to say the end of February or the first weekend in March um, we can post that schedule at any given point I just haven't done it so that you guys know um, if you look on Carolina Elite Series it's been posted there and be glad to have you come out and fish Cause I have a feeling this winter will be fun on both Norman and Wiley when it finally gets cold and everything settles down. But for everybody that's looking for something to do this weekend, the Special Olympics tournament is on Norman uh, Saturday. Just keep in mind the lake is off limits uh, until Saturday. I think it went off limits Sunday night. So don't go out there and think you're going to practice and uh, – Mm. Ruin your chances. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but um, let's see what else we got. Sunday, of course, is uh, Jason Lands tournament. We need to step it up there. We can't get but fifty six boats. That's all we can get. Maybe we need to get uh, get Jason to take his shirt off or something. I don't know. Maybe better draw some more boats. Mm. Yeah, I think you can as long as they don't have over 150 yeah, boats. Yeah, it is limited to 150 boats. Um, but um, they uh, they will let you sign up at the ramp unless the limit has been reached. Hmm. You want to re reply to Austin? Austin, I'm not worried about you, bub. I tell you what. I'd give you the same deal I gave Hayden. You lose, you wash my truck. What do you do if you lose? I wash his. Okay. I'm not bashful. Okay. Fishing question. What are your go-to baits for cold front? Hmm. Well, it just really all depends. Um, like I, mean, I said, there's... Are we to the point of that affecting the fish yet? I don't think so because the water temperature is still in the upper si low 70s, low 60s, upper 60s. Yeah. I mean, now granted, this weekend I got a feeling they're going to feel it maybe. No, nah, I don't think so. It just, um, um, it's more of a affect the fisherman thing more than it does the fish right now. It just, until the, you know, until it gets really cold, I mean, I think, uh, it's supposed to be 29 Saturday morning, which is pretty chilly. <laughs> pretty chilly from where I come from, but still, yeah, it, uh... Well, there's two there's two schools of thought on that. I mean, I've heard, you know, guys fish jerk baits and slower and all this stuff, and then I've heard other guys say fish rocks and black floats tight to the bank. They hold the most heat. There again, it all depends on what everybody... We're all different, fortunately. Everybody's not always doing the same thing. I don't know. I caught 
seven pounds on Wiley and had three fish at Norman on Sunday. So what do, <laughs> what do I know? Justin Goodyear, it's good to see you too, man. I like the new boat, by the way. Even though you caught, like you said, 40 or 50 and we struggled to catch four bass. Mm. But uh, Justin was whacking on them down there at High Rock. Just had a little bit of technical difficulty landing them. You know how that goes. We all have that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so fall fishing. People want to know. Fall fishing. Well, you're the professional. I'm going to rely on you for this segment of the show and keep my opinion to myself. <laughs> well, that's not fun. <laughs> that's what makes it entertaining is the opinions. Everybody has different opinions. Mm-hmm. But my personal opinion is, you know, obviously you want to start out with top water, whether it be, a, you know, buzz bait or a popper of some sort. Um, you know, um, around here, uh, walking bait gets a little bit of attention, but not much, you know, like a big spook or a vixen. Uh, I tend to, uh, I tend to stick with the buzz bait. Occasionally I will, I will break out the vixen this time of year, especially if you get lucky and happen to run up on some schoolers, which is, you know, which is probably going to start happening pretty soon. As the bait gets in the backs of the creeks. I mean, it should have already started happening. Well, the bait's not moved back yet. That's or true. Or if it has, I haven't seen it. Well, the thing is, is okay, so that goes back to the LY Threadfin comment. What do you want? What do you want? Ah, just uh, just read. Oh, boy. Austin, you're digging a hole, buddy. Um, So that goes back to the... L.Y. thread fin conversation. Yep. L.Y.s aren't known to rush to the back of the creek. They're not going to. They come to the bank one time a year. That's right. They come to spawn. So. Other than that, they don't, they're as far off as they can get. The next question is, is relating back to people's conversation and questions about that, do you think that the whole run to the back of the creek for fall schooling is maybe a, a second best way at fishing now? Well, there again, it all depends. I mean, you know, cause, let's face it, LYs are hardier than thread fins. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They they bass have to eat 10 times the amount of thread fins to make up the difference for an LY. Yep. So, knowing that largemouth are lazy, opportunistic feeders, um, what do you think about? Do, do they pick and choose this year they want that or that year they want this? I think that... Um, I think that there's several factors that go into that. One being the temperature, two being the water level. Um, you know, we've all, I've always had my my best times in the fall has been when the, uh, you know, when the water's low. I like it low. That's just, well, some guys don't, some guys like it high. But me personally, I like it low because I think it, it exposes more of the bank. Well, when, it, when you get a little bit of rain, obviously you get runoff. Well, when you get runoff, you get plankton in the water, which the thread fins feed on. Right now, there's no bank exposed, exactly. so there's no plankton, there's no runoff, and that's exactly right. Which, so that that being said, they have no reason to be there. So that's you know that's a good man. I hate to say this, but that's actually kind of smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not near as dumb as you think. Well, I mean, you know, you know me, I'm not the shallow water guru. Like, I don't know, and evidently there's a little piece of information to be gleaned there. <laughs> I mean, I, you know. I surprised you, didn't I? <laughs> definitely got me scratching the back of my old gourd John, right old now. Johnny Appleseed theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. So, okay, so now we go flip this around to you're talking Norman so Wiley you take all that information and there's bait that's been in the backs of the creek since August but here, here's what I think the problem is at Wiley and there again this is just my tilted in my humble opinion I think the biggest problem at Wiley is you can't get the water will not stabilize no, it gets not. out there and it, it fluctuates constantly well we all know when they when the water fluctuates, what the fish do. They suspend. Hang on a second. 
when you say fluctuate, we need to clarify this, put it on the elementary level, so to speak. Fluctuation. We're talking not six, eight inches. We're talking one to two, three yeah. or four inches. Right. Minimal. You you wouldn't notice it if you went to the boat ramp, but if you look at the graph, the graph is like this all the time. There's no steady anything. Well, let me ask you this. When you go fishing in the morning, when you're on the way to the lake, after you stop and get gas, what's the first thing you do? Um, I mean, I'm assuming you want me to say check the lake level. That's exactly what I do. I mean, I, I do. I've got Duke Energy makes an awesome app. It's called Lakeview. You can get it, download it on your smartphone. Um, and it tells you at any given point in time what the... Uh, what the water level is. What the current water level is, and you can look back as to what it's been. The, I don't think you can look yeah, you back can. on the lake view. You can't. Now, if you go on the website, it's different. See? Which, I mean, unfortunately, I don't have a way to put my screen for you guys to see. But if you pull up the lake view app, you can. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it shows all the lakes right there in front of you. And then if you go to the website, you can filter through the lakes. And That's not the one I use. What do you use? You use the website. No, I just use Duke Energy. Their website. Close out all this crap. Right there. Yeah, lakes.dukeenergy.com. Lakes Does that actually show you the graphs, though? I had never really tried. Now, let's see if there's right a... Right now, Lake Norm is 96.7. I can tell you this. It's up one-tenth from yesterday because it was, it was 96.6. Uh, 96.6, yeah. Um, there is a USGS. Uh oh, uh oh. Look here. Here's another cool thing about this. Wow, I did not know that. There's, They're going to draw down Lake Norman. You know what that's about. Will be a target, ninety six even on or about December first. Lake level for February one is ninety four. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Lake will slowly begin to refill toward May 1, target level of 98. Wow. Yeah, there's your lake history. Okay, so it does show yeah. a little bit. Now, if you go to U.S., I want to say USGS um, has a site where you can actually see it in a better graph and be able to look at it a little bit closer. Anthony Spivey, they're um, they're not available. What Vixens? Yeah, they are not available, Anthony. As of yet, I actually talked to Dave at Reaction about three weeks ago and questioned when they were going to be here, and he said he did not know. So. Um, the best thing to do is uh, get on eBay and break out the, the wallet. And hope you can find some. Even if you are willing to pay for them, hope you can find some. Chris Marshall had Me a too, Chris. Me too. Um, he said something about, Jason Land, don't disappear. We're going to talk about that next. What was it? 1v1 champs oh. tournament oh because i think we are gonna do we're gonna that. do that yeah chris marshall wants to know what's the best way to catch when the lake's turning over the best way for me is i think you have to get off of the main lake um like you were talking about earlier you get in some of the pockets back in the creeks and stuff you get away from the nasty water and i think the fish try to do the same thing man it's, i've I've caught fish this deep in turnover. I mean, yeah. just get shallower. They just try to get away from that mess is what I think. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, Ted Yandel, come see me before you do anything crazy. I might be able to give you top dollar. <laughs> no, I, last thing I need is another vixen. Got about 20 he'll let go. Bring them on up here. <laughs> yeah, if Shane doesn't take them, I'm sure you can con me into it. Bring them on up here. We're all huge fans of the Vixen. As long as you got the right couple colors. Now What's your you... favorite color, Vixen? 
My favorite or the one I use the most? Well, mine's one and the same. No, see, I've got one, have, I've got one left of the one that's my favorite, and I save that for special occasions. Well, why would you have one that 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 don't make any sense? Well, I mean, I I like all. You of like them. hold it out in front of me, man. It's pretty. I can't catch a fish on it, but it's no, pretty. I save it for tournaments. <laughs> that, I save it for tournaments that matter, like anything more than a thousand dollars to win. Gotcha. I don't want to risk losing it for three hundred bucks because I have two of those two. It's going to cost me like a whole bunch to replace it, and I'm not willing to. Uh, lime ice is a good one. I have two that I promise you, Ted and anybody else on here don't have. Well, yeah, because <laughs> you know you know the guy. <laughs> I mean, no, I really, I do got a couple of cool ones, man. I got two. Uh, I have two chrome ones that are. Uh, yeah. Ted Yandel, I got a guy that can paint those baby bass. Baby no, bass is no, a good no. color. No, that, That's the color I want. That's my favorite. Is that really? I mean, yes. You, you like baby bass? Yes. See, most times people so see me throwing a bone because that's what I've got the most of, um, and it doesn't. I mean, I backed one into a into a dock pole and split the tail off oh, of it. Oh gosh, that hurts so bad. And um. But no, I like the what is it the the gray with the holographic mm -hmm. that whatever color that is that's that's my favorite. But I got one left. Gotcha. Um, he may have some of those. Barely legals. Oh man, I've actually got a couple of those. I got both. some of those too. I don't very very rarely throw it. I like the big one. I think right now in the fall, though, you could argue a case for throwing that. Danny Gibson, the technical uh, kick knocker is as close to a real vixen as you will get. If you can get the tackle to not fill up with water. There's, I bought two of them, and both of them filled up with water. Really? Mm hmm I've got a couple that I haven't had any problems with, but you also can solve that problem very easily. Danny, and if you want to come see me, I'll tell you some tricks. <laughs> no, if, if you get a... All you got to do is get a painter just to clear over it, and it'll be fine. Well, here's the thing. I know. Why Why you want to do that? Yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Keith DeBose, two-part epoxy will yellow in the sunlight. I don't care what brand, what kind. It will turn yellow over time. And it makes the bait heavy. And it will do that, too. Um... So, fall fishing, we were talking about Wiley. We are talking about fall fishing. Walking yeah, you, you started talking about bait and fish and blah, blah, blah. Wiley, I remember the, the time in which you could start September with a quarter-ounce rattle trap in the backs of the creeks and catch fish. Yeah. Those days are, uh, oh, man. <laughs> I know I'm getting my truck washed. <laughs> wow. Roll tide, Austin. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you used to be able to throw a quarter ounce rattle trap or rattling wrap or red eye shad or whatever variation <laughs> of and catch fish in the backs of the creeks and the backs of pockets. Problem is, the last couple of years, the fish haven't gone back there because they're too wrapped up with the alewives. Yep. And so you kind of have to figure out what's up. This year is still to be determined because I, I, I don't, I mean, it's just fishing very weird right now. Yeah, because it's still early and, you know, that, that's got a, a huge, huge, what am I trying to say here? It's still early. The water's still a little bit warm for those fish to make a huge push. But I think probably after this weekend, it gets down as cold as they say it's going to. If the fish are going to go to the back, so they're going to go. So, if you look at water temperature, the optimal temperature for a largemouth bass is from 73 to 75 degrees. Is it? That's what I've heard. Now, I'm not going to quote that as fact, but if that's the case, then the fish have not yet gotten uncomfortable. Right. You know, if they get uncomfortable, they'll be pushed back to where they're they'll comfortable. Start, they'll start moving. Now, they're probably going to start next like you said, this weekend, getting uncomfortable. <laughs> Tommy Strader, you left part of that out. You mean you're ready to give me some lessons? 
I've been trying to get him to give me lessons for years. He won't do it. He catches these bass that are the size of this table down there in Cane Creek. Cane Creek Reservoir? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you want to go over there? I'm going to go over there with him. You want to go over there? <laughs> I'm going to go over there somebody knows all about it. Derek Lilly, I don't know if I did. I don't know if I text you back. I'm sorry, buddy. It's been a long weekend. Um, yes, you're right. A three or four blade spinner bait is pretty solid. Um, I think the fish are making a push back to the spinner bait a little bit. I've actually caught some on it the last couple of weeks. I mean, I've got one tied on, but um, I don't know. I've just been in a funk with. Throwing a crankbait and a spinner bail, do it like I need to. Speaking of speaking of fall fishing baits, let's talk about a crankbait a little bit. Do we have to? Mm-hmm. What do you want to know about a crankbait? What's your favorite? Four. Four cranking in the fall. Be it a square bill, uh DT six, uh brat. You know, a lot of people started throwing the brat. I think my go-to that I pick up nine times out of ten in the fall would be a DT6 or a DT10. Now, as the water gets colder, I, I'll i be honest, I throw a flat A a lot still. A lot, That's good. A, lo, a lot of guys. That's kind of one of the lost baits. You know, people don't, people kind of overlook it, and it's a heck of a bait. It is. You I'm, like the deep one or the shallow one? I like the deeper one mm -hmm. because I can fish that whether it be shallow or deep. That's right. Um, I also like wood baits. The problem is with throwing wood baits, you don't just go throw them for fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, no. It I get, have a, I have some, uh, I have a few wee baits. Oh, that, 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 that um, ship has sailed, sir, unfortunately. I know, but I still have probably, I don't know, 18 or 20. And they come out during the tournament. They don't come out when we're just out there jacking around. No. There's got to be some, some cabbage on the line. That's right. Gene Webster, funny you should say, a DD-22. He's throwing it on 25-pound line, though, up in the dirt. I, listen, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think I, hmm, I'm going to leave that one alone. If there's anybody around here that I would like to fish with one day, that would be him. Just because I've heard some things, and I just would like to see it I work. To go, I got to go with him one time. Yeah, I, we, I drove, would. we drove four hours away from here, but we <laughs> went and whacked him. Well, I was just saying, I would. I, I if if there's anybody I could pick for for one day, that he would be one of them because I've heard that he is pretty impressive when it comes to locating and. Um, Making it happen. Austin. E2 Zoom is another one of those. You only throw that when the cabbage is on the line. That's exactly right. I mean, I don't know if you've looked at what they're going to right going for <laughs> right now, but um, it's too fragile to yeah go mess around with. You got that right. And the lips will come out of an E2 if you're not careful. We don't need that. No. But did I mean, I, did I ever tell you about the time I took an E2 to Brian to get him to put the lip back in it for me? Uh uh. <laughs> How'd that go? Over? <laughs> like a turd in a punch bowl? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> did he fix it? He did, finally. But I had to listen to a whole slew of oh, I'm sure. things about that. He rode you like a government mule, mm. didn't he? Man. What did Johnson say? We live? Of course he said that. <laughs> He was <laughs> he was live Saturday night. <laughs> what happened? Well, Johnson had the annual Halloween party over there the other night, and let's just say he indulged a little too much. Oh boy! Yeah. Oh boy! And the, and then wants to get on Facebook Live, and how did I miss that? I missed it too. I was asleep, but everybody else didn't miss it. <laughs> you know they say drinking's for those that can't handle reality mm, I guess that's why I don't drink <laughs> well, more of a realist 
keep it real. Austin, you may be as careful as you can be with it, but I'm just I'm telling you for as many wood baits as I've thrown and as many as I've owned, they only come out when it when it's go time. That's exactly right. I mean, if you walked into the store right now, I got a box of Brian B's sitting over here in the corner that uh, Shane's even impressed with, and they only come out when it's go time. Crystal Crawl Speedy. I'm assuming you mean Speed Trap, Derek. That well, is Maybe it means Brian Speedy. That's another good one. I mean... I don't know. You you asked me about crankbaits. I, it's so situation specific. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say you've got one favorite one. No, it's not, man. No. Nah. How many times have you taken a certain crankbait and tried to force feed it to them, and it costs you in the long run? Well, I'm known to do that. I mean, I'm just saying how. <laughs> but usually when they're on a crankbait, I usually got three tied on, three different ones. So you're like me. You know? I'm usually a square bill, a square bill, and usually two different color DT sixes. Most so, of the so time. So you seem to favor the DT six. Uh, probably, I think the DT six is probably the most versatile bait that there is when it comes to, let's say, late fall, springtime cranking. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the DT six in a mix in the spring. Why? I'm um, because there's other baits that I'm not gonna necessarily put out there <laughs> that I'd prefer to throw. Mm. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. OSP Blitz, MR. See, I'm, I, I got mean, a whole, I got a bunch uh, of them. That, uh, do they bite it? Yeah. Is it better than the DT six? I will say I can buy four DT sixes for what you pay for one OSP blitz. I agree. Even I'm, if I break the lip out of two of them, I'm still good. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm really actually kind of interested to see how the DT eight plays out. I would like to see one. They're coming. Yeah, when December. Okay, so they said the, is that it, December of this year or next no, year? No, um, December this year. One knocker. DT4. That was it safe for all the peeps that don't have a dang clue what y'all talking about? <laughs> Hang on a second. He must ask the question. <laughs> Take a zoom fluke and hit the creeks. Mm. Is he saying that we don't have a clue what we talk about, or he I don't, don't know that, what we're talking I, about? Cody, Cody Young, he doesn't know if he's coming or going half the time. No, I love him to death, but that but that boy, he he's just he's special. <laughs> <laughs> he's special. That's Chris awful. Marshall, why don't you put something? I mean, you you've won several big tournaments. You feel free to comment. As a matter of fact, I should have had him down here. Yeah, we could we could have talked about cranking on Murray, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, and then he'd be locked up tighter than Dick's hat band over here in the corner. <laughs> Worse than he is usually. <laughs> I mean, he would not no. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Fall fishing is whoever makes the most casts. Well, all right. Or if you if you take a guy like Gene Webster, he it his thing. It's very like. You either fish specifically or you fish. One of the two. Well, that's what I, that was what I was getting ready to get at. I mean, you either cover water or you know what you're going to hit and you go hit as much of it as you can. Fish, fishing in the fall with crankbait, let's just say, what, what type of structure do you particularly like to target? Do you like flats? Do you like points? Rocky corners? And for those of you that don't know what a rocky corner is, that's just a rocky point. That's just a... A little small. Hill, it's just a hillbilly term for point. Yeah, but a corner and a point are different. I mean, uh, Cody, I'm I'm the farthest thing from a pro that you'll ever see. I promise you. <laughs> anyway, a corner is not a point. I don't feel. 
Okay, well explain then, because I feel like it is. We're going to debate this for a minute. Okay, so a point is more of a round point joining two pockets or the space between two pockets side by side. Okay. A corner is an L shape in the riprap with inside of a pocket or on the main lake. Am I wrong? So a bridge corner, for instance, right here at Lake Wiley, the biggest community hole on the lake. Uh huh. That's a bridge corner. That's not a point. Okay. It's the corner of a bridge. If you go into the Boy Scout camp over here, Camp Thunderbird, uh-huh. the where the marina dock is, mm-hmm. down the other dock, that's a corner, not a point. You go out to where the buoy is, and it's a big round point, that's a point. That's my v- version of corner. Now it's the you, same thing. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's the same thing. So... We, we both agree that it's shaped like this, right? <laughs> Gene, you're not... Mm. He said channels with bait. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No, okay, so a point is... There's a depth change on a point. On a corner, there's not so much of a depth change. If you want me to dumb it down even further. So... If you come down a, a, a rip wrap bank, it's steeper until you hit the point, and then the bank it flattens out on top, and you might go from two foot on a rip wrap to one foot, where the land goes out into the water. A corner is a hard edge that just turns. There's no there's no flat surface. See, in the now water. you're being over technical. I'm just saying that's at the end of the day, it is a round thing that divides the water. <laughs> okay. Either way you look at it. Is that can we agree on that? Okay, that's fine. Corner point. I mean I'm just trying to it's the they same want, thing. They want the information. I'm trying to give it to so that people understand. But because so, one so minute now, you're saying point. So now so now half the people that are watching this are gonna be riding around on the graph looking for an L shape under the water. No, it's not under the water. It's just <laughs> never mind. <laughs> You know what? We're going live Wednesday. Wednesday. Thursday. You know what? I might get time to come work. And you, 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 we no, go we'll Wednesday. go Thursday. I Thursday. I got to rig my boat. Ah, no, oh, that's going to bring up a whole slew of questions. You, you do know <laughs> that, right? That's okay. Um. Anyway, no. So you were saying points, whatever, rock stumps, points, and like Gene said, with bait channels with bait. What about shell beds? I'm not a real big shell bed guy. I know that they get there. My biggest problem with shell beds is I'm not really good at finding them. Why not? It's because I've never spent the time to go out there and look for them. That's that's a fair assessment. <laughs> I mean, shell beds can be in obvious places, and they can also show up in not so obvious places, and I don't understand why dredges the only lake that applies to around here i think is lake norman yep i mean yeah, they, wiley has like three there's a few on wiley three or four there's, there's something in the back of pole branch that that there's those in one other one <laughs> <laughs> those are the only ones i know okay of. <laughs> well there's like those in no i'm sorry Two other ones. Back of Little Allison has a dredge in it. Does it? They, they dredge it. It sure does. Yep, that they, big dock back there. They out. dredged that out two years ago. And it still hasn't panned out like I thought it would. i tell you, the thing about the dredges on Norman, I remember when that first became a thing. It was like when they first started dredging, dude, it was unbelievable. I know Jason Quinn fished the Elite Series there, the 2004 or five, whatever been a long time ago that's when the dredge thing was just coming on and he finished second or third i don't remember he done really well and that's all he did was crank dredges but now now they are they've got to be so many of them and they're getting older i think that um the edges aren't as hard the edges aren't as hard and the if you can find places that have been recently dredged i think they're way better than places that have been there for a while So, I don't know. I'm not a Norman 
I, I don't know. I can't. I'm not even going to speak my opinion on that because there are a couple places on Norman that I still fish that hold fish that are dredges. Um, why that is, I can't answer. I don't know either. But I mean, I went to one this weekend and I had a giant fish eat a prop bait that I completely hosed with. I mean, completely hosed that and turn around and was mad and had a loop in my spinner rod with a shaky head and I just flipped it out to the outside edge of the dredge and I went to pick it up and there was one on it and I turned around and broke that one off and <laughs> it was just between gator breaking a rod and blowing up a reel and me having some serious malfunctions on the water it just was not a good day gator does that about every time it goes fishing I I'll tell you this we laughed that's all I can say we had fun. That's all you can do is have fun. Make it fun. Have a good time. But no, back to the dredges. I think that those fish will get in them at different points in time. I don't think it's an all the time thing. No. Now the wind is who knows. Hmm. All right. So we've talked about that. I wish Gene Webster, I wish Gene would expound on this channels with bait thing who's not gonna do that i didn't figure <laughs> i didn't figure so let's talk about the uh your favorite bait what's that that stupid a rig man a rig's washed up it's a thing of the past you think so i think that it's i think it's like the chatter bait is it as good as it was bef back then no does it still have its place? Yes. You will get beat at Norman this winter at some point on a rig. I agree with that. Okay, and it may, and it's not because you didn't do the right thing. It's just because they were keyed into balls of bait that day. One singular jerk bait does not have the same effect as a ball of five or nine baits smaller swimming around together. I agree with that. Um, Absolutely. And I think this year, if everything stays as it is, we're going to have a cold, clear winter without a lot of mud. And I think it will play a factor, yes. Is it the only way that you can win? I'm I'm not sure I'm going to agree to that. I'm just going to tell you. The You're most, not going to throw it. The most exciting thing I've seen all day is that thing right there about them drawing the lake down. I'm pumped about that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. I I'm mean, pumped. I ain't gonna lie. To you. I am pumped. I can't wait. Well, pull that back up and nah. see if there's one for Wiley. Nah. I mean, because I'd like to see Wiley down to about 94. They wouldn't do that because they couldn't get any boats in. I've seen Norman that low one time in my life. Well, I know this. For all of you that are watching, and Shane's probably about to hit me. Uh oh. But if you want to learn something about Norman, I suggest you uh, go spend some time up there this winter because you're about to learn a whole bunch of stuff you didn't know was there. <laughs> uh oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that at that. Everybody wants to know how guys find these secret stumps or rocks or whatever. A lot of those guys did their time when the water was down. That's right. There, you can't graph in three foot on the lake. Right? That's exactly right. So, I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah. All right. Let's back to fall fishing. I, just can't, I couldn't contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, yeah, we're here to help. I'm not going to hand it to him on a silver platter. No. Johnson, no more river. Mm -hmm, that's right. Seems to me, Johnson, you were on the right track. You just got diverted. We didn't get diverted. We got impatient. No. That's exactly what happened. We got impatient, and I'm not blaming him at all. I was as much to do with that decision as he was. Probably more, knowing. Not really. Um, you know, because it's just, when you're up there and the water's not running, it just. It when just, you run 30 minutes and get up there and there's no water running, it's it just, very deflating. It just feels dead. You yeah. know, it just feels dead, and. and that's the way it was. Graph with the big motor. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so fall fishing. Well, I mean... Well... Is there any one person locally that you can say that has it and is the most consistent? Not particularly because... I'm going to tell you what I've seen about Lake Norman especially. There are guys that... If the wind blows out of the north, that are going to catch them. There's guys that if the wind blows out of the south, southwest are going to catch them. There's guys, and, and there's different guys. I mean, everybody's got their own little stuff that they like to fish. But see, I, I hear one common denominator. Wind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, so make sure that. And there's guys that don't want any wind, um, and those are the guys that fish out deep. I mean, that's just the way it is. And, you know, to be really consistent at Norman, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything. Especially in the fall. Because those fish are constantly on the move. Yeah. You know, funny conversation. So, you know how we talked about there were no brim on the bank? We didn't mm-hmm. see any brim on the bank? Mm-hmm. I talked to one of the other guys that fished. I'm going not mention his name just because I don't know that he necessarily wants it out. He said he was all around the brim. He probably caught fish too. No. no. He, he he got mad and left just like, well, we stayed, but kind of like we were. I didn't get mad and leave. No, I'm just saying I we just stayed. Got mad. We stayed till the end. And I mean, I did leave. I did not really hang out to talk, but I also had an hour to drive and y'all didn't. So I know that feeling every time I come down here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Anyway, so you don't feel like one person has it dialed in better than anybody else? I really don't. So Shane LeHue winning three weeks in a row is irrelevant? No, it's definitely not irrelevant. But if you look at the weather, the weather pattern was the same. The wind was the same. The wind blew. The wind blew out southwest. LeHue caught him. In the store. So you're saying if it switches over and blows out of the northwest, odds may not be the same. Exactly. Fair enough. Hmm. Interesting. What? Nothing. I'm just. I think I find that interesting. Oh. Chris Marshall, the wind is always better. Anytime, really. <laughs> yeah, the wind is. Uh... Make sure I haven't missed any questions while you <sighs> keep them entertained with more fall. I discussion. can't. I can't give all my secrets away about the wind. I just not gonna happen. I don't. Are there secrets about the wind? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we're good on questions. Has anybody got anything they want to know? Ask away. Ask some questions. Give us something to talk about. We kind of, kind of struggling tonight without Brandon here. David don't David don't like wrestling. He don't want to talk about baseball. So I mean, do you think the Braves are going to pull it off, or you think they're going to screw it up? I think they're good now. They uh, they had to start some pitchers last night that um, that weren't uh, naturally starting pitchers. You know, there were a lot a lot of bullpen guys because they they lost uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. The uh, um, their number one starter broke his leg. Got How a, do you break your leg? He got a ball hit off of his leg and it cracked his uh, oh boy shin bone femur. I think that's the femur. Is that would that be right? I thought the femur was in the. Th- I don't know. There you go, Charlie Morton. There you go. They lost. T- they lost him. So to take his place in the rotation, they pretty much had to pitch out of the bullpen. And uh, the telltale time will come, um, I think it'll be tomorrow night, I think, in Houston. Because I know t- today's a travel day, so I'm pretty sure tomorrow will be uh, game six. Okay. So, Chris Marshall's dying to know your secret with the win. Uh, Chris, we will trade secrets. You got to take me to Murray, and then I'll show you. <laughs> Of course, Chris did take me to Murray. I really can't say nothing about that. All right. Danny Gibson. 
If you're catching a bunch of little ones in a tournament, when do you leave them? So, I'm going to take this because this is freshest, freshest to me than it is to anybody else, as it is to anybody else. Some people say you don't leave fish to find fish. But if you're not around the right fish, you got to make a change. Yep. For better or for worse, you got to make a change. I'm going to leave that up to your gut discretion. That's a gut question. You got to make your own choice on that. Some would say you fish, catch the same size fish for an hour, it's time to go. Some say you don't leave and hope bigger fish pull up. I cannot. I cannot answer that. That's a situational question. Well, for me, it makes no sense to sit there and catch 25 fish that don't help you any. Um, if you manage to catch that many fish without catching one decent one, it's time know, to go. It's time to go. I agree. It's Austin, time to go. Uh, if you're fishing, or if you're jig fishing, do you drag it more than hop slash swim when it's colder? I just tell you this, I never, ever, ever drag my jig. Do you find that that, that may cost you sometimes? It may very well may. But. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I mean, you're, I'm just asking. Cause, well, that being said, they just, uh, I think by hopping the jig a lot more, I think you get, um, you get a reaction bite more than you do a feeding bite. Because if he's down there looking at it and all of a sudden it jumps up and slaps him in the face, he's just, he sucks it up. You know, they don't. Uh... So that brings it into another thing that is going on right now, which may explain some of the topwater bite issues that I know I've been having. Um, if, if fish are in a kill mode right now, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily eating. Right. They're not feeding up yet. And a lot of problem with that is the moon. The moon? Mm hmm Expound. At 11 o'clock in the day and the moon's right over your head, well, guess where it's been all night? Under your feet. Exactly. Okay. So how is that rele relevant? You don't think that the fish feed on the moon? I mean... Fish absolutely feed on the moon. Just like deer movement or anything else. Okay. When when you have a full moon at night, the fish are going to feed all night long. That's right. And I think when you got a full moon at night, going into the morning time, the first hour to hour and a half are critical because you have a lot of residual fish that are still up there from the nighttime. Correct. All right. Well, with that moon being full, like I said, they fed all night, and they fed the first hour, hour and a half. Well, guess what? Guess what they're going to do for the next four hours? Nothing. Sleep. Nothing. Yeah. That's why you'll see that, that little bit of time in the morning where they bite. Then 12 o'clock, they'll start biting again, 12, 1 o'clock. And then they'll feed for a little bit, and then they wait for that moon to get up, and then they feed all night again. So what you're saying is, is with the moon, keep going. I'm, I'm trying to get you. Here, to... Here's the best adage that I can tell you. Moon overhead, stay in bed. Moon under feet, get out of your seat. I don't care if you're fishing, deer hunting, whatever it is. The moon controls a lot of things. I know. I know. I understand. I get that. I mean. I... See, this has done turned into something totally different now. No, I mean, it's relevant. <laughs> it, it's relevant because right now. You're saying that's because of the moon. Well, they're just killing things for the sake of killing things. Right. I mean, they're, they're not eating. Like, I watched one on Wiley on Saturday kill a gizzard shed and let it float. What I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? Well, I mean, there's really nothing you can do. It's like you said. I think a lot of times they just, they kill them. They kill it, whether it be a gizzard shed or a brim. We've all seen that brim the size of your hand beside the pier float and you're going man something just jacked him oh yeah you know and a lot of times they kill them just to kill them just because they can they don't want to eat it they don't want anything to do with it they just don't want it around so they kill it and if you don't believe that put you a put you a 10 inch bass in your fish tank and watch what it does the, the, <laughs> that little 10 inch he's just he's just as mean as a six pounder 
They they have the same attitude. Yeah. They just, you know, obviously he's not going to kill anything that big, but. All right. So, Anthony Spivey, best brand spinner bait to buy. Um, local brand would be True South, more nationwide commodity. If you can find them as hog color, which we have it here at the store, Rusty Hooks. Bait and tackle. I'm gonna or, tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Let me let me jump in here. I'm gonna tell you a spinner bait that I tried that we got here is that new jackal. The yeah, the jackal dune the jackal is pretty dune sweet. Is pretty nice. It is. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the true south the the live wire which I had a hand in is as I think you know probably one of the best you can get. But like like you said, you know, there's guys that don't want to buy that stuff. They want the big name stuff. And that jackal, that new jackal spinnerbait is bad. I ain't going to tell you no lie. I mean, it's it's a little pricey, but it looks good in the water. I mean, it's... And it swims. It's, what is it, nine ninety nine? I think? Yeah. I yeah. think. Man, I got so many numbers rolling through my head. We priced so many things, I don't know. I'm going to go get one. All right, Shane's going to get one. Anyway, hog collar, True South. I mean, True South, we've got in stock pretty pretty wide selection hog collar we keep in stock i mean you buy some all of them <laughs> from a retailer's point of view come buy one of all of them be happy to sell them to you uh russell loop knot on the vixen or a split ring um uh, i'm i'm partial becoming partial to the loop knot on top water baits Although a split ring will work, it tends to weight the front of the bait down a little bit. Um, and, and you got to change your hooks to make it sit right in the water. Here's the spinner bait I was talking about. It's a Jackal Dune. Um, I got to play with a little bit here probably, I don't know, it's been a week or so ago. Got to throw it around a little bit in the wind. It tracks really good. Catches a lot of fish. I haven't caught enough on it. I always, anytime I try a new spinnerbait, my first thing for it is I, I test the wire. I catch as many of it, as many fish on it as I can until the wire breaks. Do you keep a log book? No, I just know in my head. Okay. Like when I was testing the live wire, the very first live wire I ever had caught 33 fish on it before it ever broke. Okay. Hog collar, you're going to get five or six. You I get, mean that's that's a fact. <laughs> if you get five big ones, if you get five or six on the hog collar, uh, you best cut it off before it breaks. Um, and use it as a practice better bait right. where it doesn't matter. Yep, and, and that's not to say that, and that's not a knock on the hog collar or any of that stuff. It's just the truth. No, a lot's got to do with how the wires formed and what size wires and in, in the bait and everything else. Cody Young, yes, I threw the stunner stunner a little bit Sunday. I hate to say it, but it's probably going to be a fish catcher. Out of the pack with no modifications. I didn't try to weight it or do anything crazy to it. I threw. I don't it. think you're supposed to have to do anything to that one. Okay. Am I right? I I will say this. It floats up. If you want, I thought a, it was supposed to sink. It says slow sinker on the pack. Well, how I mean, fast up does it float? I mean, like noticeably. No, or, I mean it's it. You, I mean if you. It comes back up, not like super, super fast, but it rises. Does it? It will float back to the top. Now, when that water temperature breaks the 55 degree mark, the buoyancy is different. It may not do that. That's right. So, you know, now is not a good time to answer that question. That'll be, we're going to have to have a podcast on that. Modifying jerk baits. Do we really want to do yeah, that? Yeah, why not? Okay. And for any of you wondering, it does not involve lead wire. <laughs> Period. <laughs> At all. Um, Kevin Melton, does True South make a stand-up jig? They have the Rockstar jig. They don't have a flat nose jig. They have stand-up jig heads. I'm not sure what you're looking for. I mean, if you're looking for a shaky head that stands up, yes, they make that. If you're looking for a jig like that a stands up, jig? I don't think they. I don't no. think that they do. No, only thing they have similar to that would be a oh, little ball foot, head. 
blindside for John Martin's on top of this. I'm glad he's on it so that I don't make myself look like a ding dong. And he's talking about custom shop stuff, so that's going to be a go direct to get anyway. Chris Marshall, what do you disagree with? Probably what I said about the wire on the hog collar breaking. But anyway. I don't know how to fix that. What? Brandon, did something something just come up about frame rate? I don't know. Are we dropping frames? It just says too slow. I have to get with Brandon on that. Everything seems to be working fine. Yes. I'm assuming he's talking about what I said about what? the whole collar wire breaking. I'm with Chris. Five, six fish is a little bit... Now, if they're five pounders and they're eating a whole spinner bait and folding the wire up, I agree. If they're two pounders, you can get more than five or six out of them. I'm not saying that I would wager a fifty thousand dollar tournament on that. There you go. But for I wouldn't wager a five hundred dollar tournament. On. See, I, I would. I mean, I'm I, not because I've had it. I've I've reeled in the blades on multiple occasions on the. On the old hog collar three blades, I'm talking about. I had I had it happen with the. A tournament winning fish at Hartwell in a CBC division championship and I was dumb and my partner was not there with the net and I tried to boat flip a fish that I had no business trying to boat flip no bueno I agree see here here's the thing now man I don't want to get all technical on spinner but we'll talk about that some other time <laughs> okay tune in next week for us spinnerbait 101 <laughs> Now, when are, aren't we going to have John on here? John, I'm assuming you're on for the 8th. I didn't ever hear back from Brandon, yes or no. Okay. Chris said he had over 20 pounds last year and caught over 23 or 4 pound fish on the same spinnerbait. I didn't say every one of them would break or the exception to the rules. Absolutely. Me personally, if I catch five or six on, I'm cutting it off. Period. You are my kind of customer. Okay, so next week we got John Martin. You know what, John? Bring some spinnerbait stuff. We'll talk about some We'll have We'll have some bait conversations next week. You guys saw it here first. John Martin will be here next week to discuss True South, biz, and everything that goes along with it. Butch Williams, y'all are y'all are right. I mean, you don't want to leave a hog collar on for forever. I mean, Chris is cheap. <laughs> Sorry. Well, here, Chris. here's 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 what's going here's what's going to happen is uh, Chris is going to have one of those spinner baits on, and it's going to break, and it's going to cost him a bunch of money, and then that six or seven dollars that he didn't spend. Is gonna cost him eight or ten thousand. He's gonna be really upset. I mean, yeah, it, it comes. I mean, I will say this: when you're fishing for that kind of money, it changes. It changes the way you take. I mean, for me in a cat tournament, I'll throw the same one till it breaks. It yeah, is what but, it is. But see, the way my luck is, it's gonna break when a six pounder eats it. Probably. Yeah. You're a lot more gentle than I am with fish around the boat, too. Yeah, like well, you like to let the fish swim, and I'm more of the nah, nah. jerk him into the boat as fast as I can kind of thing. Well, I mean, I think a lot of times you can rush stuff like that and cause more problems. Spe- and here's this is what happens. All right, when you get used to not having a net, you can't just have your way with them at the boat. You got to let him get a little tired before you can try to grab. Him. Now, if it's a jig, yeah, I'm boat flipping him. As quick as I can get his head to the top of the water, and he's coming over to gunnel. Unless you're like me and you set the hook and he just flies in the boat. Yeah, and you kills kill him. He kills yeah, himself kill on the ground. Him. You kill him stone dead. <laughs> anyway. All right, well, I mean, that's, yeah, you're right. Fishing without a net definitely changes the game a little bit. Yep, it does. All right, so. We wrapping up? We about done with this thing. All right, well. 
We've made it an hour and 24 minutes. <laughs> mainly because of... Oh, he try, he ties a new one on every tournament, mainly because of paint. So, Chris, are you saying you grind the spinner bait on the bottom? Picky about appearance, but it don't matter if it's broken or not. Makes sense to me, mm -hmm. said no one ever. <laughs> All right, well, stay tuned this week, especially in the news in the fishing world. Yeah, there's some things coming. That, there, uh, there's some interesting <laughs> topics to discuss in the near future. Yeah, ne next week will probably be, uh, yeah. John, be, John Martin. Y'all be sure and tune in next week. Uh, bring your bring your waiters. You might need it's them gonna next be, week. It's going to be interesting, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll leave that at that. Um, anyway, RustyHooksTackle.com. If you can't get by, we've got spinner baits galore, um, and other crank baits. All the stuff we talked about tonight, we pretty well offer here in the store, except for Vixens. Mm, okay, we'll save that for next week. Yep, we'll dive into that next week, Glenn. Uh, Pete. High school tournament going out of Buster Boy this Saturday, 120 boats. Oh, yeah, that's the big Riley's Catch. Nope, PBC. PBC. Riley's yep. Catch is the week after. No, Riley's Catch isn't coming. Where's, Riley's Catch is at Norman. That's right. Yeah. All right. Rusty Hooks Live, where our hooks may be rusty, but our points are always sharp. Tune in next week. John Martin will be here, and... We should, by next week, have a whole bunch of things to talk about. <laughs> Stay on your news feeds, people. We'll see you guys next week.